You know, when you press in, something changes. But if you don't press in, you don't get nothing. That takes those layers of press, press, press. You got to press in like you've never pressed in, like since the first time. We never want to compromise the press in. Amen? Pressing in. That's what he requires. That's what called seeking. When you seek, you press in. Amen? If you're not a seeker, then you're not one who presses in. But there's a press in to go through. Because when you press in, like, in other words, you can make a meal, but somebody's got to eat it. It takes a process to get to the meal and then eat it and partake. When you press in, you begin to partake. If you don't press in, you don't partake. You can sit there all day long. You can come to 60 services and not get nothing. And every time you leave, the devil will steal everything. Until you press in. Because the press in is what makes the exchange. Without the exchange, there's no change. Amen? All the time. We must press in. We must press in. This morning I woke up and I said to my wife, I'm grieved. I got a groaning in my spirit. I don't know what's going on. And the Lord gave me a teaching. And after he gave me the teaching, as I was praising and worshiping, hallelujah, I saw what I was groaning about. And I saw the, like Noah's Ark, and a door was open. And I saw people trying to run and to get into the ark, because I knew time was short. And a door began to close, and began to close. And a flood of water came through. It was like a windstorm with water. And it took everyone out that didn't make it in. And then they shut. And he said, these are the ones that have been left. They didn't make it in. Because they didn't press in. Because they were still touching the unclean things. Because they are still doing their will. I've warned them over and over and over, and they refuse to submit and to abide. They're still attached to the world, so I left them connected with the world. And I was grieved. My spirit groaned, and I wept because of how many will not make it. How many will not make it, thinking that they're all right? Still playing the game. See, they've lost their true reverence and fear of God because they become disconnected and distant. They lost the fear. That's where the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because without that fear and tremble, there's no salvation. They kept themselves associated with things that they shouldn't have. They were contaminated even though they weren't bound. Does everybody understand that? See, you can be contaminated and not bound. The Lord said to me, 50 years ago I lifted my glory from the United States. But I left my presence. But he said, I'm returning my glory. He lifted his glory 50 years ago when abortion was approved. But he says, I'm returning my glory. That means that law is going to be turned over. But the enemy will do whatever it can because what keeps the ports of demonic activity open is the blood of humans. 
The sacrifice of humans keeps those demonic portals open. That's why God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, lack of warfare. They're still fighting for their lives instead of surrendering. We are in what they call the final stages. Everyone say final stages. In Matthew 24, verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, do, not, do you not see all these things? Why? Because they did not have vision and sight yet. Jesus was trying to show them spiritually, but they can only see physically. Do you not see all these things? As surely as I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age, and it's the age of grace. And Jesus said, Take heed that no one deceive you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> For many will come in my name, multiple doctrines, and say, I'm the Christ, or I'm the Savior, or I'm the Rescuer. And he will deceive, many will be deceived. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Say that you're not troubled, for all these things must take place, but the end is not yet. And nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows or what we call the beginning of birth pangs. Birth pangs. There's stages of birth. There's pre-labor signs until the final stage of birth. So in this there's laboring, isn't there? A woman goes through labor. God always looked looked in, uh, and, and paralleled things into the area of woman birthing because the body is birthing right now. The body is about to give a tremendous birth. The earth is growing to give a tremendous birth. Everything is in the final stages of birth. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as a what? Labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. In other words, these are the final stages. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober or what? Alert. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort one another and edify one another, just as you also are doing. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, and be patient with all. 
Seeing that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Jesus for you. And do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. And abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Final stage. It is the warning and preparations. This just warned us. He explained everything that we need to do. Amen? And Romans 8, 18. Let's speak it. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now the present time is called legal time. It's legal time. There's legal time and there's God's time. Legal time is associated with the temporary realm. God's time <laughs> is designated only by him. Amen? Because God's time is God's will. Come on, say it with me. God's time is God's will. See, man's will is called legal time. And the enemy only has access to legal time. He does not have access to God's time. Come on, grab hold of that. So when people get out of position and do stupid stuff, hello? Why is it? Because if they're doing their will, which is legal time, and the enemy's got influence to them. But when you're doing God's will, it's God's time, and he can't influence you. Hello? Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? We are. Sons and daughters. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with what? Birth pangs together into what? Now. Why? Because it's about to give birth. Somebody get it? Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Why? Because we're about to give birth. Eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Groans and labors with birth pains. <laughs> These are the labor stages. As a child in a womb of protection, being released into a new reality. Think about that. When a child is in a womb, it's a different reality. When it comes out of that womb, it comes into another reality. Right now, this birthing that is going to occur shortly is going to release us into a new reality. Oh, hallelujah. And the child is born in an environment. It's a protective environment. <clears throat> in this, um, in, in this new release of new reality, it, we're going to enter a perception accompanied by others awaiting the cutting loose of the old into the new. No longer influenced by creation. The new reality will no longer, a creation will no longer influence us. But the influence and reliance will be on the creator. This is a new reality we are coming to enter. This is the new birth that's going to be released. 
They will be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The body of Christ will be stronger, united, and unified. The world will hate you even more. Because it can't access you. Creation. Wealth. Fame. Fortune. Will no longer influence the body. It will be a distant. Because the glory of God will be released on his children. Oh, hallelujah. And, I, and 1 Samuel chapter 4. In verse 17. Now Eli was the prophet at that time. And the Lord kept warning him about his sons that were in fornication. Israel held the ark of the covenant of God. The glory of God was with them. And they went to war. The Philistines began to attack. In verse 17. So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled from the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. Also your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. And the ark of God has been what? Captured. The glory of God is lifted. Been removed. Then it happened when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli, the prophet, fell off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and fat, or heavy. He judged Israel 40 years. Now his daughter-in-law, Phinehas, wife, was with child due to be delivered. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed, bowed herself and gave birth for her labor pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman who stood by her said to her, do not fear for you have born a son. But she did not answer, nor did she regard it. Then the name of the child, Ichabod, saying, the glory which was mean, meant, the glory has departed from Israel because the ark of God had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, the glory has departed from Israel for the ark of God has been captured. Again, it was about giving birth. But the family that was associated with this child died. And now they waited. And again, this is associated with 50 years ago as abortion was approved and many unborn children were slaughtered in the womb of, the, of protection. The Lord lifted his glory from the United States. But he allowed his presence to seek out those willing to follow putting in presidents that were anti-Christ promoters and followers until Donald Trump. Hmm. Known as God's trumpet of sound that has begun the awakening to some and exposure to the unfaithful to return the glory of God to the United States. Jesus said something very powerful. He says, if you're not with me, you're against me. If you're not with me. See, I, I say the same thing. If, if people aren't with you, then they're against you. Luke 17, 22. Jesus said to the disciples, the days will come when you'll desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. People are desiring to see the Lord's return now. And they will say to you, look here and look there and do not go after them or father them. For the lightning that flashes out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven. So also the Son of Man will be in his glory. 
But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by, his, by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. Are we in the days of Noah? Oh, yes. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Hello, that means without female, male, same marriage, same sex. Until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them. That's what I saw today. But many of them were so-called believers. But they weren't believers. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot with Sodom and Gomorrah. They ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he was on the housetop, and his goods are in the house. Let them not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. <laughs> what happened to her? On their way out, she turned and she looked. Why? She couldn't let go. Let go of the past. See, when an individual can't let go of the past, she turned to, her, she turned to stone, but a person's heart's still stony. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in a, one bed. One will be taken, the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken, the one will be left. Two men will be in a field. One will be taken, the other will be left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there is the eagles will be gathered together. Days of Noah and Sodom. These things must come to an end in all of this perversion. All this transgender stuff. You know, we went out, I think, I don't know if I told you, but we went out to dinner at a place, and I went to go use the restroom, and it said uh, something about all sexes or whatever, uh, all genders. I thought, dear God, I don't know what's going to happen when I open this door. I'm thinking all these stalls were there and all kinds of people were in there, you know. Thinking, oh man, if I go in there, I'm throwing them out. But there was just one little thing there. And I thought, oh good. <laughs> Praise God. But I thought it was kind of all genders. You know. Why can't they just have restroom? <laughs> well, or bathroom. One of them, you know. Go to Ephesians 4, please. In verse 17. Speak it this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the world in the fertility of their thoughts and desires, having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. Many are being alienated from the life of God and don't even realize it. They even read their Bible and they're still alienated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them, it says. Because of the blindness of their heart. Why? They become stony. Will not walk away from the old. Not shut the doors. Who be in past feeling. Hello. Emotionally influenced. They're more loyal to their feelings than they are to the truth. Have given themselves over to lewdness. To work uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you've not so learned Christ. If indeed, if you had heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off these things. Concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts or desires or emotional leadings. And be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts and your mind. And that you put on the new creation which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. We are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin about it. It's called righteous, holy, righteous anger. 
And do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Now here's the kicker. Are you ready? Verse 27, read it with me. Nor give place to the devil. Nor give place to the, the make, make no place opening a way of, to offense, bitterness, unforgiveness, relations, retaliation, anger, jealousies, gossip, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. They had opened the doors to the past. They opened the doors to the past. And when you open the door to the past, spirits have legal access. That's what we, you know, they become self-defense, defending self. Voices of the stranger increase. Sicknesses and disease. Disease doesn't mean medical. It means that they're in an area where they're not at peace. They're able to, not able to reach the new things that God has set ahead. They can't reach them no matter what they do. They can't get to them. You know, why do people struggle? Because there's something from the past that's come to the present. The devil cannot mess with your future. He can only mess with your past. Amen? Isaiah 43, verse 16. Let me tell you, when I saw that door shutting and I saw people just get wiped away, you know, you, you, you think that it's about the wickedness and whatever, but these are people that thought that they were okay. And I saw their connections to earth. In other words, they're kind of like chained. So they couldn't get in. Like a dog being chained. Only go so distant. Think about that. Except for they weren't chained or like cords or something like that. Hallelujah. Grieve me tremendously. 43.16, please. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Thus says the Lord, who made a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, And, and the army and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the what? I want to say that again. Do not remember what? The former things. Nor consider the things of what? Old. Behold, I will do a what? New thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people. What did the Lord say? In the latter days I will what? Pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This people I have formed for who? Myself. He will give drink to my chosen I formed them for myself. They shall declare my what? Praise. Are we the generation of that? Yes. There's more praise going to the Lord than there ever has been. We are that generation. He said this now. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob, and you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me the sheep for your burnt offerings, nor have you honored me with your sacrifices. Now, that's sacrifices of praise today. I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have brought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins, and you have wearied me with your what? Iniquities. I even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And then I'll remember your sins. Put me in remembrance and let us contend together. State your cause that you may be acquitted. Your first father sinned. Who's he talking about? Adam. 
and you and your meditate mediators have transgressed against me. Therefore, I will I will profane the princes of the sanctuary, and I'll give Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproaches. He said, don't remember the former life and its attachments, but enter into the new reality set before us that is about to be released. You know, many are going to miss it, but many will grab hold of it, and they will advance. And Matthew 25, verse 1, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be like to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out and met the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. To be foolish is to be deceived. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. They, in other words, they took no presents. They, took, they, didn't take, they weren't getting fed enough, filled enough. They relied on their own ability and knowledge. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming to go out to meet them. Then all those virgins arose, trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. Now you got to remember, he talks about virgins because they've been washed clean. Amen. So these are people who have been washed by the blood of Jesus, but are not being fed or being filled with the Spirit of God. They lack gathering together. They lack getting in God's corporate worship. They lack these things. But the wise answered, saying, no. That's why they have wisdom. No. Lest there should not be enough for us and you, but you. Go gather, to, go gather those who sell and buy for yourself. See, you can't give nobody else your oil. Now listen, the enemy loves to drain oil. Amen? I got a truck that does its own oil change. It leaks so much oil, that's all I need to do is put a filter in it. But some people are constantly leaking all the time because of their associations, because of the things they agree with. Because of their own tongue. And it says, while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with the, into the wedding, and the door was what? Shut. This is what I saw. Afterward, the other virgins came. Here they come. Also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. He answered and said, surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. We must maintain a level of worship and assembly. Worship and assembly. We can't allow our jobs and anything else of fear to interfere. We can't allow labor and work and all of these other things to interfere with getting in God's presence. You never know that day. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3. It says, this is the will of God. Your what? Your separation, your sanctification. That means you've got to have a pure heart and clean hands. You've got to be careful what you listen to, watch, see, agree with. Your sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each one should know how to possess his own vessel. It's amazing how many people don't know how to possess their own vessel. And keep them sanctified. In sanctification and honor, they don't know how to truly do that. Not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles, who do not know God. See, when the Lord, you got to look at something. We're no longer seeing through the fallen nature eyes. We're seeing through the eyes of God. When we see through the eyes of God, there's a reverence and a fear of the Lord. It's not that you're judging people. I don't need to. I'll tell them by their fruit. I'll tell them by their desires, their choices, their decisions, whether they know God or not. Many people say, I know God, but they don't know him. 
Because that reverence is not maintained. And without the presence of God, you can't maintain the reverence. Amen? And without that reverence, you can't maintain the presence of God. He said this in verse 6, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Now let me tell you, there's a lot of defrauding going on in the body of Christ. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such, and as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in what? Holiness. Therefore he rejects this, does not reject man, but God, who has also given us the, his holy spirit. We should know how to possess he or she, their temples, and especially their tongue, dominion. And Hebrews chapter 10. Final stages. We're in them. I don't know what seals have been broken. I don't know if they've been broken. But you know, the Lord says that those who know him, who know his time. Amen? They'll know his time. Because God's time is different than legal time. Hebrews 10 verse 1. Let's speak it. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, Make those who approach perfect. For then would they have not have ceased to be offered. For the worshippers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore when Jesus came into the world. He said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin. You had no pleasure. And I said, behold, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do your will, O God. Previously saying, sacrifice and offering, burnt offering and offerings for sin, you did not desire, nor have pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, then he may establish the second. By that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, this Lord, this God, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Are you being sanctified? Amen. I, you, this is where you, you're either walking into sanctification or you're walking away from it. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us after, for after he had said before, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws, my words into their hearts and into their thoughts. I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of these, they're no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled with an ev from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, 
and so much more as you see the day approaching. We have no excuse. <laughs> Amen? There's no excuse. You can reason, you can justify, and you can blame. But everybody's accountable. And whatever man sows, he what? Reaps. Proverbs 23. Verse 1. Proverbs 23, 1, when you sit down and eat with a ruler or someone in authority, consider carefully what you what is before you. Just because they hold a position doesn't mean they're doing the right things. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. In other words, not a, you must look at this spiritually, not as food. Some people just accept and receive everything. They eat anything anybody says to them. And sometimes they're eating what we call deceptive food. And it causes problems because they're agreeing with what they're hearing. It says, do not desire his delicacy for they are what? Deceptive food. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he has eaten drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. And do not speak in the hearing of an idiot or a fool. For he will despise the wisdom of your words. Wow. Let me share with you this. Block all the voices of deceptive food. Block them. Sever them. Facebook, flesh book, cell phones, all of these other things. You get emails from people that you don't block them. Why open the doors? You will not step into the new until all is cut loose from the old. Amen? Matthew 16, verse 24. And Jesus said to them, if anyone really wants to come after me, anyone really wants to follow me, anyone really wants to be my disciple, he must deny the old man and all its associations and connections and take up his cross and fight to follow Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is a man if he gains all friends of worldliness, the world and all its possessions, and loses his own soul? Or gets locked out? Or what will a man give in exchange for his souls? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father, with his angels, and they will reward each one according to his obedience. Does everybody get it? Works here means obedience. It's not your works of labor. It's works of obedience. I surely I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming into his kingdom. And I want to close this 2 Corinthians 5. Not your works. But I did this, I did that. Hello? Remember they came to him? They said, wait a minute. I know all these things you did. But you still practice lawlessness. You still disobeyed my will. You still wouldn't cut yourself loose of the world. And you were rebellious and disobedient. And I don't know you. I believe God is still tightening up big time. I believe that they're still shaking and shaking and shaking because he's coming for a pure church. The church is not ready to be raptured. Not at all. There's got to be more burn. There's got to be more sanctification. But he's preparing us. 
and those who are willing to go through the burn will get the glory. They'll receive God's glory. Does everybody understand that? So God can get all the glory. Amen. Again, the glory of God was lifted from the United States 50 years ago. Didn't mean he didn't pour out a spirit in places, but his glory was lifted. You hear little patches here and there. But he's about to return his glory. That means abortion has to be turned away. No more abortion. There's going to be things that are going to be turned, over, turned around. And his glory is going to come back. And his church is going to rise like it never rose before. Verse 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. <laughs> I say that's called a rebuke. <laughs> for if we are beside ourselves, it is for, your, for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we know Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore if anyone is in Christ... He is a what? New creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become what? This is a requirement to enter the new. It is a requirement. Old things must pass away before you can enter the new. Does everybody get that? Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you as Christ, on Christ's behalf, to be reconciled to God, cutting loose of the old and getting ready to step into the new. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Again, the requirement to enter the new is to, as a new creation of Christ, is to let old things pass away and all things become new. Amen? Again, we are in the final stages. You'll see more shaking and a quaking. There'll be more falls. Because many are falling away. But there's going to be a great harvest. Because many will become fearful seeing those who have fallen. Does everybody understand that? Many will become more reverence to God seeing those who have fallen and been taken out by the voice of influence. Listen, God's getting everybody's attention now. Because we're in the final stages. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for a word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for your warnings and preparation. And we thank you that you have given us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to teach us, and to empower us so that we can be submissive and obedient. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound abundantly. Prepare our hearts for communion, and you can bring up any tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name.